Shalom everybody, we are back. <coughs> and we're going to look at Malachi chapter 1 verse 1 to 2 verse 7. Uh, who'd like to read the prophets? Can you read? The message of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, said Yahweh, but you asked, in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Yaakov's brother, declares Yahweh, and I love Yaakov, but I hated Esau, and have laid waste his mountains and his inheritance for the jackals of the wilderness. If Edom says, we have been beaten down, let us return and build, build the ruins, Yahweh of hosts said thus, let them build, but I tear down. And they shall be called border of wrongness, and the people against whom Yahweh is enraged for ever. And your eyes shall see, and you shall say, Great is Yahweh beyond the border of Israel. A son esteems his father, and a servant his master. And if I am the father, where is my esteem? And if I am a master, where is my fear? Said Yahweh of hosts, to you priests who despise my name. But you asked, In what way have we despised your name? You are presenting defiled food on my slaughter place. But you asked, in what way have we defiled you? Because you say, the table of Yahweh is dis <coughs> despicable. And when you present the blind as a slaughtering, is it not evil? And when you present the lame and sick, is it not evil? Bring it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favor favorably? Said Yahweh of hosts. Mm. And now entreat the face of Al to show favor to us. This has been done by your hands. Would he show favor to you? said Yahweh of hosts. Who among you who would, who would shut the doors so that you would not kindle fire on my sort of place for naught? I have no pleasure in you, said Yahweh of hosts, nor do I accept an offering from your hands. For from the rising of the sun even to its going down, my name is great among nations, and in every place incense is presented to my name and a clean offering. For my name is great among nations, said Yahweh of hosts. But you are profaning me, in that you say, The table of Yahweh is defiled, and its fruit, its food, is despicable. And you said, Oh, what weariness! And you sneered at it, said Yahweh of hosts. And you brought in plunder, and the lame and the sick. Thus you have brought in the offering. Should I accept this from your hand, said Yahweh? But cursed be the deceiver who has a male in his flock, and makes a vow, but is slaughtering to Yahweh what is blemished. For I am a great sovereign, said Yahweh of hosts, and my name is feared among nations. And now, O priests, this command is for you. If you do not hear, and if you do not take it to heart, or give esteem to my name, said Yahweh of hosts, I shall send a curse upon you, and I shall curse your blessings. And indeed, I have cursed them, because you do not take it to heart. See, I shall rebuke your seed and scatter dung before your faces, the dung of your festivals, and you shall be taken away with it. And you shall know that I have sent this command to you, as being my covenant with Levi, said Yahweh of hosts. My covenant with him was life and peace, and I gave them to him to fear, and he feared me and stood in awe of my name. The Torah of truth was in his mouth, and unrighteousness was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and straightness, and turned many away from crookedness. For the lips of a priest should guard knowledge, and they seek the Torah from his mouth, for he is the messenger of Yahweh of hosts. <clears throat> okay, so Malachi is a very powerful book which is a, a, a word that is still very much alive as a clear message of Yahweh to those who are walking in the flesh today. Malachi means my messenger. And as we consider these words in Malachi, we take note that it doesn't matter whether this is a physical name or just a title because it's nowhere else used in Scripture. This is a name. And uh, what we do see that Malachi is used in Scripture in terms of my messenger and Yahweh is his own messenger at times, so you can go and read Yahweh our messenger as well, that article, and you can get a feel for that. But what we do take note of here is the messenger of Yahweh 
is one who's bringing Yahweh's word. So it's as if Yahweh himself is speaking the word to you directly. So when we look at this, this is Yahweh speaking like he has done through all his word, because he, he reveals no matter unless he, he, he declares no matter unless he reveals it through his prophets. So we understand that these words here, when we read it, it's not just, oh, that's the words of so-and-so, the words of so-and-so. This is Yahweh himself, as if he was standing in your midst speaking these words. And the message that was being sent to this rebellious people, so he sends his messenger, because Yahweh didn't want to be in the midst of people that are depraved and falling away, so he sends a messenger with his word, a stern word at that as well. You know, and so when we see a powerful picture here of these words, we were looking today at Esau and Yaakov, and so here Yahweh makes it very clear that while we read Yitzhak loved Esau and Rivka loved Yaakov, we see very clearly here that Yahweh says, I have loved you, said Yahweh, but you asked in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau Yaakov's brother? And declares Yahweh, and I love Yaakov, but I have hated Esau and have laid waste his mountains and his inheritance for the jackals of the wilderness. Again, judgment language. I've laid waste his inheritance for the jackals of the wilderness, the beasts and the birds, the feast. So that which is of the flesh, I've laid waste their inheritance. Their inheritance is not going to get them anywhere. It's going to be devoured, you know, by the feast of the birds and the beasts that I have appointed upon the wrong. So if you're not part of Yahweh's feasts, you will be part of the feast that he's appointed for the birds and the beasts, which is not a feast you want to be part of, you know, where the flesh that you operated in will be devoured. And so he uses this thing, he's saying, okay, now he's, because... Because at this stage in the history, we see a very clear picture. The word that's translated as this is the message. The word message is masa, which means to bear or carry or support or tribute or load or lift. And it comes from the root verb nasa, which means to lift up, arise, bring forth. So what's understood in the context of this is that this message or this prophetic book is a word that brings a prophetic teaching of a threatening character. And a mainly consists of a rebuke from Yahweh for people that were not living complete set-apart lives before him. And so this is then regarded as a burden or something that's heavy to bear, but it must be lifted up and declared. This was a hard word, but it had to be spoken. And there are times that when people need to be told, that's why when we are to judge one another and when we see a brother sinning we've got to go tell them listen this is what... sometimes it feels like how am I supposed to say it how am I... but it's you've got to lift up and you've got to declare it it's important you know and so Yehuda at this stage had quickly backslidden into corrupt ways and these were very heavy words that needed to be given to them in a severe rebuke they had to hear this it was necessary because they were just carrying on like, yeah, oh, everything's fine and we're just doing what we want and Yahweh loves us and everything else. And when he says, I've hated Esau, he's basically saying the way you're operating, you're operating in the flesh and I hate that. You know? And he says there's no fear of Yahweh. There's a lack of proper esteem that was to be given to his name. And despite the returning exiles being greatly inspired by Haggai, because at that time when you got Haggai and Ezra and Nehemiah and everybody's encouraging one another, some of the exiles from Yehuda that had come from captivity in Babylon returning, and some of them, you know, there was a bit of excitement some years before, because Malachi is a number of years, probably about 50 years after Haggai, so it's not long, you know. This once fervent Elohim-fearing people that were rejoicing at the sound of hearing the Torah on Yom Teruah, tearing their garments, said, do not weep, this is a day to rejoice. Fifty years later, when they should have been building up what they started and established and turned back to, had gone back to worse ways again. They'd become complacent and mediocre, and they would just typically go through the motions of religious cycles. It's just like, okay, got to do Shabbat, got to do Passover, got to do this, so well, we just got to do these things, and it doesn't really matter, don't need to prepare, as long as you just tick the list, we're fine. That's how they were operating. They were allowing mixing, they were allowing whatever, oh, that's a nice thing, don't think about the discernment, that's the way the nations do it. No, but it's nice, let's, let's join in, let's do that together and everything else. And during the years of Haggai, the, the people actually listened and responded. Because when Yahweh said through Haggai, consider your ways, the people listened. 
when the house of Elohim was in ruins, but everyone else was building paneled houses, Yahweh said, consider your ways. From this day all onwards, I will bless you. And they considered, they changed their ways, they listened, and they started building and started focusing on Yahweh and his building. Fifty years later, it's gone worse. It's like Yahweh's building's there, but it's there for us to just show up. But we're busy with our own lives. And Yahweh must just bless us. You know? They'd become so disillusioned that they were basically uh, um, started questioning their worship. Why are we doing what we do? Is this really necessary? You know? They started to question whether their worship, their family responsibilities, and their proper giving was actually really worth it anymore. You know, do I really need to give to Yahweh? Do I really need to tithe? And now you want gifts and offerings over and above that. Are you crazy? Does it really matter? I've got stuff to do. You know? You don't understand it. But it sounds so familiar today, does it not? That's why I said it's a living word. Many people that are still disillusioned are questioning whether true worship is necessary. Whether true putting Yahweh first is necessary. In fact, there is no false of putting Yahweh first. You either put him first or you don't put him first. You can construct something in your mind. You think, yes, I know I'm doing that. But you know what? Yahweh can see your heart. You can put an outward show before people. But Yahweh saw right through Hananiah and Shapira that lied to the spirit. And this is something that people need to be warned. This is a heavy message, but it needs to be lifted up and declared in our day. The problem that was at the heart of the backslid in Yehuda was that the fear of Yahweh was not there. It had gone. And that's the same problem that we find with so many people today. You know, Yehuda, backslid in Yehuda needed to be asked, where is the esteem of Yahweh that's to be given to his name? Where is the fear that is to be given to him as Elohim? So he asks these questions. He says, if I am the father, where is my esteem? It's conditional. If you see me as father, why are you not giving weight to what I'm saying? Because the Hebrew word for esteem, kavot, means to, means to bear or heavy or weight or give substance to, you know. And the opposite of that, of that is to make light of, which is, is actually a part of a curse because you don't really consider the ramifications of your actions. So when you're not giving weight to what you're being instructed and disciplined by your father, then you're making light. You're treating him as, ah, it doesn't really matter. And that's what Yehuda were doing. He says, if I am the master, where is my esteem? Yeshua said to the one who said, good teacher, he said, you call me good, but you know there's only one good. He wasn't saying he wasn't the good teacher. But he was basically saying to the guy, if you say that I am good, why are you not doing what I'm telling you? You know, this is a question of identity. If I am the father, where is my esteem? Because if you see Yahweh as your father, then you're supposed to be operating as obedient children. You know, many people want to be identified as children of the Most High, yet they give no weight to his commands and they easily cast aside his Torah as something not to be taken serious. Because to not give esteem means to not take serious. That's another way of putting it. You know, and in the process, they're unable to properly praise his name. We're told right through the Psalms and right through scriptures, we are to esteem his name. We're to declare his name. We're to ascribe praise to his name. We are to, uh, um, everything that we do is to be in a boast and a praise and an esteem, giving weight. His name declares that he is the one that causes me to, de to be, and the one who causes me to be is my deliverer. Do, are you living like it? Are you living like one who's been delivered by the one who causes life? Because if you are, Yahweh wouldn't be questioning, where's my esteem? Because it would be given to him. As you would take serious his words. You know, many will recite, our father in the heavens, you know, let your name be set apart. But they're not bringing esteem to his name. You know, so they say, our father who's in the heavens, let your name be set apart. Okay, it's just the recital of the lips, but are you living it? And I think that's what people miss here. They're not bringing the esteem to his name. They don't take him serious enough. They have no clue what his word teaches about set-apartness. And that's the state that Yehuda were in right here. And Yahweh had to send his messenger because Yehuda and Israel had no clue that they were despising the name of Yahweh. They thought, what do you mean we're despising his name? 
simply because the priesthood had been corrupted and they weren't teaching the truth anymore. We ended this reading, it ends in verse 7 of chapter 2, where the lips of a priest should guard knowledge, etc. But read chapter eight, uh, verse 8. But you would not, because it was a state of the priesthood that had become so corrupt. They were not teaching the difference between the set apart and the profane. They were just allowing what everybody wa- what anybody wants. Oh, we'll just convene the, the mixed gathering. We'll just convene and everybody can do what they want and it's all fine. They were bringing, the Torah wasn't being taught and that's a, that's a key today. You're finding Torah fellowships or claiming Torah observant fellowships in Messiah, not having the Torah taught to them on the Shabbat, that's already a clue as something that's blemished in their worship because they're not giving weight and substance to the word of Elohim as the foundation for everything else that's taught, the prophets and the writings, etc. You know, they had no clue that they were despising his name. They didn't see their compromised and corrupt worship as a problem. And there's a lot of people that are keeping Sabbath and feast today that don't see the way they're doing it as a problem. Because actually they don't know that there's a problem because nobody's teaching them the difference of set apartness and mixing. And if nobody's teaching them, they all just come and say, oh, well, yes, we can now have a nine-candle menorah. Oh, that's okay. Oh, we can have t- talits. No, that's okay because it feels good. It's abominable worship before the master. And it's things that he despises. I'm just using some examples. You know, what about using false titles and false names? Oh, it's fine. Just let them come. Don't worry. It's okay. We all know who we're talking about. Oh, do you? Where's the weight to the presence of the creator that you should be giving? You're treating him lightly. It doesn't really matter what he calls. He knows our heart. He knows what we mean. That is not giving esteem to a father. Because then you're just a servant that doesn't know the father and doesn't know his name. It's just sir or madam or whatever you want to say to anybody you're doing service to. No, Yahweh's not madam, but you get what I'm saying. But when there's an intimate identity understood, then the proper esteem is taken serious. Now, I know there's a lot of uh, uh, children today that don't care what their parents say, but that's the wrong image. And that's where a lot of people are, are, are... sadly mistaken in. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, that this word for despised or despicable um, is bazaar, which means to be careless, to uh, be in contempt, to be vile, to be worthless. So here we get a picture of a worthless servant. And the worthless servant hides the talents because he's not doing what he should be doing with what's put in his hand. And the answer to the question how they were despising the name of Yahweh and treating it carelessly is given in the next verse. You are presenting defiled food on my slaughter place. But you asked, in what way have we defiled you? We're doing what the word says in their interpretation of the word. Because people think as long as I, I think I'm doing right, then it must be right. Because you say the table of Yahweh is despicable. Now, this rebuke on how they were presenting defiled food uh, and calling the table of Yahweh despicable is a clear rebuke of how they were actually despising the feasts of Yahweh, although thinking that they're actually keeping them, you know. And so they were contaminating their worship, bringing in the corrupt pagan practices that surrounded them by the nations, bringing elements of them in, not totally setting Yahweh apart. And they... We're bringing in some of the sun worship practices that were, that were, were being done by the nations and caused the festivals to become so defiled. It wasn't Yahweh's feast anymore. It had actually become a stench to him. It wasn't his feast. It was the dung of their festivals. That's why in the book of Asha, he says, I've hated your new moons, your festivals. Because when you do it outside of the boundaries and instructions of Yahweh's commands, it's no longer his festival. It doesn't matter what time you think you're keeping, you know. And the Hebrew word for defiled comes from the root word ga'al, which means to defile, to stain, to be unclean.